In this lecture, presented by www.3-academy.com, we're going to be covering Rowley's Theorem and the Mean Value Theorem. Actually, we're going to be starting out with the Mean Value Theorem first, because Rowley's Theorem, at least in my opinion, is just a special case of the Mean Value Theorem. And the Mean Value Theorem states that if f of x is continuous and differentiable on a certain interval from a to b, then there is at least one point c where f prime of c will equal f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Wow, that's a mouthful. All right, what does that actually mean? Well, let's take a look at the formula here. We have f of b on our point f of x, and then we have an f of a on our graph of f of x. Notice f b minus f a over b minus a is really a slope. It's the line, it's the slope of the line that connects the two point. And what this theorem is saying, that at least on one point of this graph, the derivative has to equal the slope. Um, the derivative has to equal the slope of this line. So we're going to give this the arbitrary value of, say, 3 fourths. And that's not what it is, but, you know. And if you notice by expend, ex, inspection, that once you get to about this point, that the tangent line is parallel. And that's the mean value theorem right there. If, you, if it's continuous and differentiable, and you take the two endpoints of your interval, at some point along the line, the derivative has to equal the slope between the two endpoints. And I implore you to try to come up with a counterexample to this because it makes perfect sense. Right here is the equation approximately x to the third. We'll take any two points on this, draw a line between them, and you notice somewhere in that interval there's a parallel line and it does not matter where you do this. And uh, without going into the mathematical derivations, because I think they're kind of arbitrary at this point, basically if you're going to have a curve between two different points, the curve, the slope of the curve has to at some point, well it's let me put my words together here. If you have a curve going between two points, the overall change in that curve must be encompassed within that curve. So when you say from A to B, that's the overall change of F from A to B. And like in my first example I said this is 3 fourth. Notice on the negative graph you got negative numbers say negative 2, negative 1, negative half, 0, 0, 3 fourths, 1, 1 and a half, 2. You know, you're going to have a distribution of the rates and change over the course of that curve but at one point, at least one point of that curve, it must uh, be equal to the overall rate to change. So that's the mean value theorem. I guess I'll, it's a little bit more cumbersome to say than it is to actually understand. Rowley's theorem is kind of a special case of this. Or Rowley's theorem. I'm not quite sure how it's pronounced. And without writing it down, Rowley's theorem states that if you have a function, any function, and you have an interval where f of a equals f of b and equals zero, then you must have at least one point on that interval where f of c equals zero. So in a little bit more digestible terms, if you have a function that crosses the x-axis twice at 
at least one point you must have a local maximum or a minimum. And again, I implore you to come up with a situation where a counterexample to this. Uh, let's take a look at uh, you know our x to the third, f of x equals x to the third. Well, notice that, uh, minus four, whatever, doesn't matter. This doesn't cross the x-axis twice, so Rowley's theorem does not apply. I chose a little bit bad of an example there. Let me bring up a new note. Let's take a look at the graph of oh, just a straight line. At no point of this line does the derivative equal zero, but then again, the line doesn't cross the x-axis at two points, so Rowley's theorem doesn't apply. If you were to take a look at example for as a sine wave, uh, that crosses the x-axis a bunch of times, so pick an interval where f of a and f of b both equal zero, and you notice at a one spot the derivative equals zero. And like I said before, this is kind of a specialized case of the mean value theorem in my point. So the rate to change at some point of the of an interval must equal the overall rate of change of that interval. And I will leave you with that. Except for a bunch of practice problems that we'll do, like always. <laughs>